All right, so I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Solder Stick, for sponsoring this video. You can click the link in the description or in the pinned comment, use code ROB20 for 20% off your order. Guess what? You're supposed to say what? What? It's another day and another video. And today's video, we're gonna be working on the old hog that left Hillbilly on the side of the road. But we're not even mad about it. We're actually really pumped. It's got a few clankety clanks. The plan is today is to get it up on our Harbor Freight motorcycle lift, and we're gonna rip the engine out. More like Hillbilly and probably Steve. Yesterday was my daughter's fifth birthday. Little Adley turned five. We bought her a little Stasic electric motor, not a motorcycle. We bought her a Stasic electric bike. That's what it is. And she's scared to death of it. So we're gonna build her some training wheels she's probably. She's not scared. She's not scared. She just can't balance. She doesn't understand. <laughs> She's five, give her a break. Okay, she can't balance. We're gonna build her some training wheels contraption thing. So I'm gonna be headed over to bring it back. I'll fab something up. So my little girl has some training wheels. Make sure you go check out the videos. If you haven't seen the Harley, Hillbilly finally got his Harley and we are so pumped about it. Thank you, Rick and Christy again for giving it to him. Now we get to pull the motor out, see what's wrong with it. I think it's an Ultima 127 cubic inch, big humongous high compression V motor. I don't know. I'm not a Harley expert or a motorcycle, anything. And if we're gonna tear it apart, what do you guys think? Should we paint it while we're fixing the engine? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be pink. <laughs> Hillbilly's not in here to say it can't be pink, so it's gonna be <laughs> pink. Hillbilly! About fell on the old hog. Whoa! Oh, well, bye bye. <laughs> okay, so uh, that didn't work. Uh, don't try this. At home. <laughs> oh, I pushed your bars forward. Isn't there like a break <laughs> on the? <laughs> I can't. The bars keep moving forward. <laughs> don't. Move. Don't let it roll backwards can literally only do so much. We're gonna figure out how to lock this tire into place. We probably need some straps. Okay, in order to start pulling the motor, we have to get all this off. So in order to do that, I have to take this cover back off, take this new stator out, take everything, the drive chain and everything out, undo the bolts, and this whole piece will be off. Normally I just, I cut the whole label out, but since the drain hole is literally the size of one of these Allen heads, I'm only gonna make it small enough that we can catch it. And then when we go like this, it's only gonna come up into here and not spill out anywhere. Now we just let it drain. That's almost done draining. It's just stripping now. So I'm gonna start at the top and work my way all the way around to get this crankcase cover off. While Hillbilly's working on the Harley, I gotta run to Track Supply and my local hardware store because I need to go get some stuff to build. Not so little Adley, my sweetheart little five-year-old, some training wheels for her new Stasic electric bike. Jumped in the old Honda Civic. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love these old cars because you can get in them, you can be mean to them, and they still love you. This sweet thing, it's a 2002 Honda Civic, 200,000 miles, and it just runs like a top. All right, so just went into track supply. I was gonna get some like eight inch pneumatic tires, but you know what? I think they're just a little bit too big for what I'm after. So, and I got me the six inch by 1.5 inch. We're gonna head over to Hermanson's, grab some rod, and we're gonna make us some training wheels for Adley. I got all the good stuff. Got my wheels from track supply, and I went and got some dill rod from Hermanson's. So now, I just need to build something like this to go under there but it's not gonna be that simple. So bend it to where she doesn't fall over. We don't wanna put normal training wheels. So I'm gonna bend it to where it's about an inch off the ground so she can teeter side to side just slightly. Maybe that will help her balance better. Yeah. I'm gonna make a two inch drop. I'm gonna put it in this vise and I'm gonna center it. And that's how big the center platform is gonna be. And we'll get it going downhill and then we'll measure two inches and we'll bend it. <laughs> Started to bend, but I think I'm gonna need heat. This is a learning exercise. I gotta go down a lot more, then I'll have to let it cool, then I'll bend this one, and then I'll know how to bend the other side. Yeah, that's much better. So let that cool. 
learning exercise. Now I'm gonna work on getting the bolts from that holds the crankcase to the motor on. There's little tabs that are already bent out of the way that locks it so it can't come loose. All right, we've had a 90 it is off. That works. Now we got a two inch drop. Now we'll do the other side. And then this will go on. Then we'll drill a hole, we'll washer it and pin it. And then she'll be able to wee. You know, this is how we work. We learn as we go. That's pretty dang good for being an eyeball job. Taking the seat off so that way I can get to the gas tank and get the gas tanks off. The reason I say gas tanks is because it's two separate tanks with the feeder line from one tank to the other. Feeder line doesn't work. So once we get it off and get all the gas out of it, we need to figure out why it wouldn't feed. We had to use an auxiliary feeder line. There you go for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> got a way better motion. Pulling the gauges off and switch off. So I distill the hose off of the breather for the tank so I can stick it on the other side and get the fuel drained out of the tank. And that's the feeder from tank to tank that is not working. We don't know if, it, if the hose itself is plugged, We're the nipple on this tank is plugged, or the nipple on the other side is plugged. Well, did you pull it off and see if it comes out? No. I'm going to drain the tank first. Well, where's your siphon? Uh, I'm not doing that. Why not? You're really good at it. Why? When I can just... I'm just getting ready to hook the fuel line up to where I can drain it. Now we let it drain. Found some plate that I'm gonna cut a little square out of. Five and a quarter. My plate's gonna be five and a quarter by two inch. So Hillbilly's got some gasoline back there, so I should probably not spark him up. He tells me after I do it. I thought you knew better. Now we just gotta cut this out and make sure it fits the plate. So we're 1-0, M6 by 1-0s. So we're gonna go here or here, let's see. So that doesn't give us much more length. So I'm gonna go to this size. This is the M6 1-0 by 25. A fitting with a clear hose hooked into the leveler hose from the other tank. So we'll see if it's plugged. No, it's not. So is it the tank? That's what I'm thinking. Bada bang, bada boom. I just love it when sometimes you do something right. For me, it's few and far between. So I'll line those up. I'm gonna weld it. Actually, I'll weld it to the back. All right, so I just wanna tack that and we're gonna fit it. If I squared it up on the table, I think it's gonna work. Now the fuel's all drained out, it's time to unbolt the tanks. There's one tank. I wanna get this tightened up and then we're gonna flip it over and check the wheels. All right, so I wanted about an inch of movement. Look at that, it's gonna work perfect. So she can ride it, she can bounce off one wheel, go the other wheel, it's exactly what I wanted. I don't want this all the way out here. I just think that's a little obnoxiously overkill. I'm gonna measure this out. I think I'm gonna go six inches. That's gonna put us right there. I'm gonna pin the outside, but I need the inside to hold the wheels. This is a half inch rod. We're gonna go grab some half inch washers. And what do you know? Just what I needed. Look at that, perfect. We'll take this back off and weld those in. Oh, she's gonna love it. And she'll be here at five. We gotta hurry because it's like four o'clock. You don't want these wheels planted on the ground. You wanna have a little bit so that when she gets comfortable, she can ride off of the training wheel. So she can balance it and the wheels will be off the ground. Work on getting the battery all undone. I don't need to be getting shocked or shorten stuff out if one of the wires and uh, do's live. I got one washer on. At least gonna be here in like 30 minutes. We've gotta put washers on the outside, mark it so that I can drill and tap it and put a cotter pin. That's how we're gonna keep them on. Got it. So this is a cotter pin. This will go in that hole and we'll spread it and it'll keep the wheel from coming off. Look at that. That's the sweetest set of training wheels I've ever seen. So now I want to do like a half an inch out here. We'll lob it off. I'm working on getting the exhaust unbolted right now. It's being a pain. We're running out of time, so we're not going to paint it right now. We're just going to get it all put together so that when Adley gets here, she can ride it for us. You can buy a set of training wheels for this, but you can't buy them today. You have to order them online and it takes like a week. I don't have a week to wait for my baby girl to ride her new bike. I don't think she will wait a week. 
She's a less waiter than I am. She waits way less than me. Oh yeah. That is how you build training wheels for your five-year-old daughter. Got the exhaust all unbolted. So now, it should. In theory, you always have to say in theory. In theory's not going very well. Don't worry. I'm basically a Harley mechanic now. So yeah, see that? I did it. What qualifies you to say? A Harley mechanic. There it is. Yep, there it is. So basically, we worked on this enough that it qualifies us. So you can call Hillbilly for all of your Harley Davidson mechanical issues. I can't get that throttle pedal out. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're the dog, sometimes you're the hydrant. Or you. In the grass below the hydrant. I have to conquer this, just in case you're curious. You finally got it? I am now the dog. Throttle cables expertly removed. There's two of them. In case you guys are curious, don't ask me why. You don't know why? So it's well, one pushes, yeah. One pushes, one pulls. So if the throttle gets stuck, you can force it back. See, that's why he's a Harley Davidson rider, not me. Do you know what else is smart to do? Check the level of your oil. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, huh? <laughs> Stop it. I mean, you don't have to check your oil, <laughs> but it helps. It does helps. I did check it. No, when? <laughs> Not when you blew it up. You Before checked it once that said zero. <laughs> oh, poor Okay. Hillary. Just accept defeat. An oil leak? No, it has an internal oil consumption problem. <laughs> it should go to AA for oil. For eating it. I'm gonna show you the three most common ways to solder wire. So I'd like to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Solder Stick. So I'm gonna use a conventional soldering iron with solder and a heat shrink. And I'm gonna show you how long that takes. Then we're gonna do a normal butt connector with heat shrink. And then I'm gonna show you how quick, easy, and efficient the solder stick connectors fix two pieces of wire. Soldering is great, butt connectors are great, but if you're looking for all around easy product to use, these solder sticks work the best. A conventional butt connector. You gotta have a special pair of pliers just to crimp them. After all that work, you still gotta get your torch all heated up. Now what we're gonna do, soldering with an iron and actual solder. You gotta have all these extra tools. I've let this heat up for about five minutes. Look at all that smoke. So this is real life an issue, running out of butane. So we're gonna let this kind of cool down for a minute. All right, so we've got that into position. Now, gotta have another torch. Now solder stick, all you need is this right here to melt the slug in the center and heat shrink it. You don't need pliers. You don't need a butane torch that's about to run out. You don't need any solder because the solder is already built in and your heat shrink sleeve is on the outside. No tools required except for heat. Put my wire in and then turn the heat on. That took about 20 seconds. You've got solder that flowed through all the fibers of these wires. See that? With very minimal tools, you can have an awesome, strong solder stick connected repair. Make sure you click that link in the description and in the pinned comment and get yourself 20% off by using code ROB20 for 20% off your solder stick order. We got three Three different styles of repair. Here's my choice right here, solder stick. So let's get back to work and get this Harley motor torn down. So I'm working on the upper motor mount where this is an aftermarket engine. Well, they've added to it. It's a wishbone style. So I'm taking off the entire mount. So this is what holds the motor now. This is the old mount, got it off. So Hillbilly's working on uh -oh. all the lower stuff. He just said, uh-oh, and I'm not sure why. What? You don't see all the metallic? Well, yeah, the motor's junk. I, I'm thinking it's bottom end. Yeah, junk. A bearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when no oil and It's making bearings. the same noise that your LS, LS. makes. Brrr. Yeah. When there's no oil um, in something that requires oil and there's moving parts and there's friction, it creates bearing loss. Now we're diagnosing this. We don't know what's wrong. We're gonna find out, sweetheart. You're gonna be ridden by Hillbilly before you know it. In order to find out exactly what it is, we'll have to tear the whole motor down. Yeah, actually, I don't think you have to tear the whole thing down. Probably just that cylinder off and be able to see. In order to crack the case, you have to crack, uh, pull the whole, uh, both jugs off. Hate when we have to pull both jugs off. <laughs> Darn it. We'll be able to see once we pull this jug off. Just getting everything unhooked. Got all the oil lines unhooked. I just got to do my cable for the clutch. After that, two hoses over here that goes from the oil filter to the uh, oil cooler. Once I get that done, then I can pull the filter off, get these motor, front motor mount bolts out, and get the back ones out, and the motor's going to come out, in theory. I'm trying to get all oil drained out of it, so that way we don't have no messes when we pull the motor off the bike. Is it ready? Is what ready? Where's my surprise? It's time for my surprise. Guess what? 
Look at your bike. You see it? What is it? A training wheels. Do you want to ride it? All right, put your feet where they go. Okay. Watch out. Okay, go. Okay, turn. This is a break. Put your feet up. Okay, go. Go, go, go. Go. Is that off? I think she likes it. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like it. Why? Because it goes super fast. The training wheels work, but it's too fast and she's scared. So we're going to have to get some more training on the bike, get a helmet. Hillbilly's just about got this done, but it's late and we're going to go home for the night because we're tired. So it is tomorrow. It is the next day. And guess what? We're pulling the engine out of the old Harley Davidson. Hillbilly should have had it done, but you know what? We can't all be perfect all the time. Let's well, see, so. you lift that motor out by yourself. I'm gonna lift the motor out myself. Oh yeah. Ah! Now what, Hillbilly? Carry yeah. it around. Be more impressed. Will you please be impressed? Thank you. So we've got the 127 Ultima engine out. We're gonna try to build some sort of a contraption to hold it while we disassemble the jugs. I was talking to Hillbilly and we might as well, we're not gonna touch the frame. We're not gonna dis disassemble the frame any further, but we're thinking, should we paint the fenders, the tanks and the saddlebags while we're at it? Not only rebuild it, if you wanna see this thing get painted, let us know in the comments. It's up to you guys. Now, you don't get to choose the color because this is Hillbilly's bike. He gets to choose, but you guys are more than welcome to give us your opinions on what color it should be. He doesn't get to choose, it's already pink. Oh yeah, everything's pink, I forgot. I didn't just hear him say candy apple red. We do silver with red candy over it. Uh, it's it's sick. I think we need a bigger block. I think we need two bigger blocks. Where are we getting a bigger block? Maybe we should call Craig. That's a, actually, that's a good idea. You know what? We're going to FaceTime Craig from The Bearded Mechanic. Our friend, our friend Craig, him and Sean have another channel. It's called The Bearded Mechanic. And he's a bike mechanic. So we're going to FaceTime him. We're going to get the carburetor assembly off. And then we're going to start disassembling this head, jug, push tubes, all that stuff to try to see if we can see down inside this case, figure out what exactly catastrophically failed. Taking the breather cover off because there's two bolts behind the breather cover that it bolts to each head. Expert-like. I'll do the hard stuff. I'll get these bolts out. We just pull these four bolts and the whole assembly will come out with the intake and the carburetor all at once. I think we're gonna go as far as taking the intake off, taking this valve cover off. Then we're gonna call the professionals. We're gonna be calling Craig, our BFF. I feel like this is gonna catastrophically fail. You remember when you were a child, you would just take things apart just because it was cool and you never actually put it back together. You just had all your little cars that are just broken and in pieces. I feel like that's how this is gonna be. Mine is the more expensive toys and mom and dad always got really mad at me because I never put them back together. Mine were cars and they were in my dad's gravel driveway and he didn't appreciate it much. It was an actual car. I had a 1972 Toyota Corolla. I took it completely apart and then never put it back together. So you scrapped it? Yeah. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? I was 15. Put it back together. I didn't know how. And that's where my problems started. Whoa. What? You don't see all the metal flakes? Those are supposed to be there. <laughs> you ran this thing out of oil. Probably should have asked Craig if this is the correct way, because I'm sure all the internet mechanics of the world are gonna roast me for doing this. All right, now we're down to the... Oh! Came oh. right off. So I'm thinking our issue is gonna be on this side, because that is full, full blown full of metal. That's got a butterfly valve. This side doesn't. Oh, that's metal. <laughs> That's not grease, that's metallic. Um, I think let's get the carburetor off and then let's call Craig. If I've already screwed something up, I don't want to screw it up anymore. All right, we got the bolts out. I wish cars intakes were that easy. So we're gonna give Craig from Bikes and Beards and the Bearded Mechanic a call. So if you guys haven't checked out his channel, go check it out right here. He's a very, very smart human being. Well, good, well good afternoon, Craig. How's your new channel? Doing great. I'm really stoked. Cool, we're super happy for you. It's the Bearded Mechanic, right? Correct. Make sure you guys check it out. You are the guy when it comes to this. Ooh. It's got an Ultima 127 cubic inch aftermarket engine. We want to tear it down to try to figure out what's going on. Um, we're ready to take the head off and get your take on how far down we can tear this down. If you got my phone number, you can go all the way. Well, that's, that's good news. So can I make a prediction? Yes. You're gonna pull the head off there and you're not gonna see much. And then when you pull the cylinder off, that connecting rod is gonna be loose on the bottom end. So you think our lower bearings are gone? 
Yeah, I think you knocked out the big end bearing on the front cylinder. Okay, hey, I really appreciate your time, and we're super excited about your new channel. So Thanks, awesome. Buddy. Appreciate it. Okay, talk to you later, Craig. All right. Okay, yeah. bye. Craig has given us the faith. Oh, that is so, so tight. So this is going to take all of our big boy might. What do you think they're torqued to? When we go to put it back together, we'll figure that out. Torque to your full pressure? Yeah, they're they're full, like all the ugga duggas, like every dugga ugga. Craig's given us a brand new boost of confidence. He's made a prediction on what he thinks is wrong. Makes me feel better that his prediction is about the same as what ours was. Head removal. This right here, the craziest thing in the world, this is a head gasket, like a Briggs and Stratton head gasket. Now we got to get these tubes out of the way and we'll figure out how to pull this. Oh, it's bronze. Yep. I bet that's bearing. Oh, man. That's the clock, 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 clock. Greg was right. I say we tear it all the way down. Ooh. Gar we need to hone it. Oh, yeah, you do. Holy crap. So right here, there's little scratches and pits. We'll have to hone the cylinder. All these metal pieces got it. Look, that is bronze. He was right. All right, so that has got the massive amount of slap. Craig was correct. We have a lower bearing on the piston that is shot at the cam or at the crank. So we're gonna pull this side down as well. And then we're gonna crack the lower case. See if we can't get in there and just really see the damage that we created. Hopefully the crank's usable, but I'm gonna guess that it's probably junk. So we'll see. Well, that head came off about the exact same as the last one. We're gonna work on labeling everything, getting it taped up, put in the box. Here in a second, me and Hillbilly are gonna wiggle this and get the rear jug off so we can just see exactly what's going on. I think it's just the front, just the front bearing, but we don't know. We're about to find out. Here, I'll let Hillbilly use his big paws here in a second. Look at that. And this one doesn't even move. Well, we have officially taken a Harley Davidson engine apart. Almost. So again, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Solder Stick, for sponsoring this video. It's raining here today and it is going crazy. You can't see it. Is that how you do it? That's how we're doing it. I don't know. I don't know about this. Wait, does it just split open? Uh, well, we're not really sure. We're learning as we go. Yeah. Yo, before we ruin this, is it safe to pry the two halves of the crankcase apart? Uh, you shouldn't pry. Okay, how do you do it? <laughs> I'm trying to think, you might have to like pull them. Well, we didn't, we definitely didn't use a pry bar. <laughs> yeah, no, we would never do that. Right. For the record, it may or may not have a quarter of an inch of a gap already, but we'll still use a puller because that we want to do things proper. I got a big humongous puller I think I'll try quite a bit it's shot. All right, we have one here that did the exact same thing so that means that you know how to build these i didn't build it yet so that means that once you have practice you'll know how to build these but i can figure it out that's what i like to hear all right well we'll call you as soon as this sucker is cracked thank you so he said that literally cracking the case is the very very last thing you do so all this has to come off you just want to jump into hurries this is your 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 man in this ship not me all right, well, this just got a lot more work. We're not quite there yet, but we're we're close. Yeah, that's what's holding it, is the little oil pump gears. Careful of that. Look at that pile of shavings. Yeah, we gotta take this side off. Let's pull this cover off, see if the cam will come out. Be very, very careful. Oh, and our friend Case showed up. So he's just super bison, and he's got his brother Brandon with him. Look at that. <whistles> what is this? Oh, they're just sitting in there. There are so many issues right now with all of this. Look at all that metal. Yeah, we weren't getting that home. Why not? Because you did 150 miles an hour up the blues. I felt like I was only doing 65, to tell you the truth. Yeah, how fast did you go up the blues? So fast. So, fast. so the oil pump shaft is a little seized. I'm guessing it was starved for oil. The stiff spring goes right here. The non-stiff spring goes here. For when we lose this washer, it goes there. Holy cow. Look at that, that is so jacked. Whoa, what? you feel it out here moving. Like the shaft feels like it's moving. I think Craig said not to pry it open. Oil. Well, I think this motor's junk. You're not rebuilding this. Uh, I mean, maybe Craig, but I think this is above our pay grade. I think we're gonna accept defeat. 
on this one. What do you think, Billy? We don't got to fully apart yet to know. I don't think you guys will be able to put it back together. So Craig said, do not use pry bars. So these identify as plastic not, bars. Yeah, plastic bars. We're doing our best work. That's not moving it. Yeah, it is. Look, I did it. Sometimes you just need a little tap, tap, a little tap, tap, tap a room. Uh, we did not ruin that, so put that somewhere safe. Oh my heck, no way. What? How do you get this off? Probably got to take the other side off and you tap it out or press it out. This seems way too complicated. Why can't you be easy? I think, I think we've hit a fork in the road. Look at how cool that is though. It just goes into each other. We currently have See no that? idea how to crack the- Tappy tappy. So at this point, at this point, we've just totally given up on being gentle. Is so, it going? I don't know, go. So at this point, we've just decided that brute force is the answer and Hillbilly wants to just destroy what little hope we had to rebuild this. I don't think he was ever being gentle. We have a mess. We have a complete mess. Oh my God. So we pretty much have accepted defeat at this point. We realize that this is probably not gonna get rebuilt because it's everything's junk. Is it tilted? Yeah, where the oil pump gears were and the cam, and the lifters are all like season up. We had to pry the rod that goes to the oil pump shaft. Yeah, this thing has drank some, some metal. How do you go about getting these out? You you have to press the crank halves apart. It's a two piece crank. Pretty much above That's my pay piece. grade. We might just accept our defeat and break it open. Ooh, <laughs> you could try pressing it out. We do gotta press. You're already this far. Yep. What's the worst that's gonna happen? Well, we're gonna put it in the press and if that doesn't work, we're gonna throw it on the ground. <laughs> we're gonna put this in the press. We're gonna take it to pound town. All right, so we've got the engine half in the press. We're gonna hurry push the crank out and see if we can't figure out how to pull the rods off. Just about got this block completely disassembled. Oh. <laughs> We're having a little bit of a failure. Well, not quite. We saved it. That's your press out. Do we dare? Well, we're already this far, why not? All right, so we decided to not try to press that out because we don't want to screw it up any further than we possibly could have. We're going to check into a rebuild or possibly check into a new engine. So as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.